Hi, Steve here, and in this video, you're going to learn how to use luminosity masks in Photoshop to blend two exposures more cleanly than any HDR software can do. So this is a beginner level luminosity masking tutorial, but it does assume that you're familiar in general with the idea of layer masking. If not, then check out my intro to layers and masks video. I'll put a link in the description and just in the top corner of the video here. And if you want to learn the ins and outs of luminosity masking in Photoshop from the ground up all the way through to mastery level, then you can download my free PDF guide and intro to luminosity masking to get started. The link is in the description below. And if you like this video, please just uh, let me know by giving it a thumbs up so I can keep on making more just like this. And remember to subscribe to my channel and click the little bell notification icon to be notified by YouTube every time I publish a new tutorial. So the image that we're going to be working on in this example is actually two bracketed exposures. So we've got this uh, this bright exposure here, which um, which exposes the foreground. And then on the bottom layer here, we've got a darker exposure where we've managed to retain the detail and color in the sky. So what we're going to do by the end of this tutorial is create a luminosity mask that allows us to blend just that bright part of the sky in with the bright exposure where the foreground is darker. And the reason that we're going to use a luminosity mask rather than just use a regular brush in a layer mask is simply because we're not going to be able to get the accuracy that we need by just brushing up close to those edges there because there's just too much detail and you know we, we, you would spend a lifetime trying to brush around every single pixel to make that transition between the bright sky and the dark foreground look natural. I titled this video Understanding Luminosity Mask in Photoshop. So I'll just start off by giving a quick run through of what it actually means and you know when we say luminosity masks rather than layer masks what are we actually talking about. So to demonstrate this I'll just I'll add a layer mask to this top layer here the bright layer and I'll grab a black brush and so with a regular layer mask what we're doing is painting with you know usually we'll use a low opacity black brush into a white layer mask to essentially conceal this top layer here so black is to conceal when you're brushing into a layer mask so we're concealing this layer so that the layer beneath it starts to become visible so Essentially, you know, you can think of it like we're erasing this top layer when we use a black brush in the layer mask. So if I do this, you know, just with a big brush, as I mentioned a minute ago, you know, you'll see that I'm brushing through to reveal this layer beneath. But because of those brush strokes being so big and sort of clumsy, I'm actually, you know, brushing over the edges into the mountains here. And you'll notice the the actual edges of the mountains are getting darker because those um, you know if I just disable the mask you'll see that you know because I'm also brushing through the darker exposure in the mountains as well and so this is why this is really not an ideal method when you've got like a complicated edge between your two exposures so if I now have a look at this layer mask and I can do that by pressing Alt or Option on the keyboard and clicking on the mask. Yeah, this is my layer mask. So, you know, the areas where I've brushed more um, because it's a low opacity brush, I've brushed more and the black is darker. Over here in this area, it's a bit more of a light gray. So I haven't brushed as heavily in this area. And the result of that is that, you know, where it's kind of a light gray, that's, that's essentially lightly erased this top layer. And so therefore bringing through this bottom layer to a lesser degree and where I've brushed more and the layer mask is more black or a stronger black, then that's where I've essentially erased more of this top layer to bring through more of the bottom layer. Relating that to a luminosity mask, uh, what I'll do is just quickly run through the steps to create a luminosity mask and then I'll explain afterwards. So actually I might just copy this entire layer and I'll hide the original. So this is the original with the layer mask. So I'll just name that original. And this is our one that we're gonna create a luminosity mask for. 
So I just rename that luminosity. So now I can just delete this layer mask. And the quickest way to create a luminosity mask is to load a selection that is based on the luminosity of the image. And then with that selection active, then when we add the layer mask to the layer, that selection gets loaded directly into the uh, into the layer mask, therefore making it a luminosity mask. So if that seems a bit kind of complicated, then I'll just demonstrate quickly how you know how that actually works. So let's uh, let's use a lasso tool, and I'll just create a selection here, and I'm just going to draw like a squiggly line to create a selection, and we get the marching ants. And that's created that shape through the middle here. So uh, yeah, this is just a regular selection, not a luminosity selection. This is just based on the shape that I've drawn. And now if I, with that selection active, if I click on add layer mask, that selection is now loaded into the layer mask of this layer. And so just like before, where the, uh, you know, anywhere that I've brushed into the layer mask it with a black brush that has hidden this top layer and concealed it to bring through the darker layer beneath. So if I just look at that now, this is what the layer mask looks like compared to this one before. So, you know, it's basically the inverse in terms of, you know, most of this original layer mask is white with a bit of black that I've brushed in. That selection that I drew is that you know inside that selection becomes white and outside it becomes black so everything that is black is concealed from this layer so knowing that the difference between what i've just done there and a luminosity mask is instead of using the lasso tool to draw our uh, selection i'm going to come into the channels panel actually my panel has, all the, the tabs have gone in a funny order. Uh, okay, so from the layers panel into the channels panel. And just as the sort of the most basic kind of luminosity mask you can create, um, I'll, I will uh, hold on the keyboard command or control and click on the RGB channel. And so what that's done, it's loaded a selection that's based on the luminosity values of the RGB channel or of the image. And so rather than being a flat kind of two dimensional selection where it's just like a drawn shape and everything outside is going to be black, everything inside is going to be white. It's kind of more three dimensional in that the selection is going to select more or less based on whether the image is brighter or darker. So if I just come back over into the layers panel, and still with the selection active, I'm going to click on the add layer mask button. And now let's have a look at this layer mask. So alt or option on the keyboard, click on the luminosity uh, selection, uh, sorry, on the uh, on the layer mask of the luminosity layer. And we can see here, this basically looks like a black and white version of the image, but it's actually a layer mask that's been uh, created based on the luminosity of the image. So the dark parts of the image are darker, almost black in the layer mask, and the bright parts are bright in the layer mask. So, you know, whereas that selection that I drew with the lasso tool was just two dimensional, it was kind of like a flat, you know, selection where I just, everything outside was black, everything inside the selection was white. Here with the luminosity selection by control or command clicking on the RGB channel, we have got a selection where the brighter the pixels are, the more of that part of the image is going to be selected and included in the selection. And the darker it is, the less it's going to be selected. So when we now load that into this layer mask, to put that into kind of layman's terms, the dark parts of the image have been masked out and the bright parts have been masked in or basically left alone. So looking at the effect of that on our layers, it's actually kind of done the opposite to what we want. So we've hidden or masked out or erased from this top layer, all of the dark parts of the image and left the, uh, the bright parts of the image from this bright layer. So, you know, if we look at the, uh, the original background here, 
and now we click on this uh, luminosity layer we can see that basically we've done the opposite of what we want so the quick fix for that is to click on the uh, layer mask and invert it so with the command or control and I on the keyboard we can invert the layer now and if I just look at that luminosity uh, layer mask alt or option click then we can see here now that's essentially you know inverted so the sky is black and everything in the foreground is either white or a light gray so the effect of that on the image now is that this is the original background layer and this is the uh, blended bright layer on top of that where because the selection or because the luminosity selection has created a layer mask with a purely black sky we've kept all of that uh, sky from the original dark layer and blended the foreground from the brighter layer now it's not like a two-dimensional um, you know, blend like or a selection so what I mean by that is if we look at the layer mask again you know all of these grays in here are blending this uh, this layer to a different degree so to a you know the darker the uh, layer mask the more we've blended this layer out so the sky is pure black pretty much but the foreground here is a kind of middle gray and so that's basically you know masked half of this layer out so if i just toggle this off and on again a bit then you'll see it, it's brightening up but not all the way now the problem with this is that it can create sort of a bit of a mushy contrast so just a tip for what you can do uh, if you've got a situation like this uh, if we just come back to view the layer mask you can actually just take a, a white brush in here now and just kind of get rid of this uh, foreground in the mask now this is going to be okay for this particular image because um, you know the brush strokes can be quite sort of don't, it doesn't need to be that accurate um, because up here in the mountain you know, I'm not having to go that close to the edges of the mountain to sort of worry about whether I'm going to go over into the sky so uh, yeah this works quite well so just by making that foreground all white now then that's bringing more of this uh, more of this top layer into view in the blended image so here now when I disable and re-enable the layer mask just with a shift click on the mask we can see this is the uh, this is the original top bright layer and now this is with the sky blended in and now once you get to this point in your workflow then you'll be able to continue on and make the rest of your edits on this kind of even flat exposure where you haven't got like an overexposed sky or underexposed foreground and you know so that makes it a lot easier to process from this point on so for example if we want to add a levels adjustment to add some contrast we can do that and you know the foreground is really starting to pop just with these uh, these few little tweaks on the levels adjustment layer there and let's just tweak the color a little bit maybe with the uh, curves adjustment so let's put a little bit more red into the image there just to give it a bit more of a nice pink glow it works quite nicely I think and with all of these adjustments you can do the same kind of thing uh, with a luminosity mask so that you can make it so that you know like a curves adjustment only affects the brighter parts of the image rather than the darker parts and vice versa and if you want to try that out then you can download my intro to luminosity masking PDF because that contains a link to a raw file that you can download and follow along with the demonstration um, so you can test that out and see how that all works and, and figure out how what I've shown you here with the exposure blending can be applied when uh, using it for adjustment layers as well. And now for anybody who has already downloaded my luminosity masking panel or for anyone who's interested in perhaps uh, doing so, I'll just delete this last couple of adjustments I've added and let's just create another copy of this 
layer so that I can remove this top layer mask. And I'll just show you how a similar thing or how the same thing can be done using the luminosity masking panel. So rather than going into the channels panel, the luminosity masking panel kind of has everything just available on the, uh, you know, in the main window here. And you can load your selections based on this bar across the top in the luminosity selections uh, section. Now to create the same selection that I just did in the previous example in the RGB channel, uh, in the channels panel, I can click on this one button here on the right hand side of the zero in the uh, in this bar across the top. And yeah, with the previews turned on in the panel, it's gonna show me uh, basically the same thing as if I was just to go into the channels panel, command click on the RGB channel and then save that as a new channel. And so I can use this in the same way as I did before. Uh, I just need to click use mask and then click on the add layer mask button there. And we'll see that gets loaded into the, uh, into the layer mask of this layer. And I just need to invert it. And that's essentially done the exact same thing as what we just did in the previous, uh, in the previous steps manually. Uh, what you can also do here, what this makes easier is um, we can go towards the left of zero. So we're basically creating selections into the shadows rather than into the highlights. So if I click on the one on the left of the zero, that's created the correct selection that I'm not gonna have to invert later. So if I click use mask now, then I can hit that button and that's done exactly what we wanted it to. So we've blended the sky with the foreground from the correct layers without inverting the layer mask. Now also, if I just delete that again, what we can do is, if I click on this one button again to load that selection preview, uh, with the panel, we can actually quite easily make modifications to this. So you know, if I wanted the grays to be a bit brighter, so they, you know, so that I didn't have to do that bit where I was brushing the, uh, the grays out, then we can click these arrows here to sort of increase the brightness of those grays. We can make the blacks darker by going uh, this way on, the, you know, in the, with these arrows here. And we can keep tweaking it until we get the selection that we want. And then we can click use mask and then hit the layer mask button there. Um, or let's delete that again one more time. Um, Let's hit that one button again to create that same selection. If we hit this levels button, then we can just tweak what that looks like just with the, uh, you know, with this levels pop up here. So you can make adjustments to your selection. Uh, let's go this way. This is what we want. So we want the foreground to be as, as kind of light as possible. Click OK. And then from here, we can click use mask and then add that as a selection. So yeah, that's how you can do the same thing, uh, but just with a bit more versatility using the luminosity masking panel. But you know, if you haven't got the panel or you don't wanna use it, then everything that I showed you in the first part of this tutorial will um, yeah, will get you on the road to using luminosity masking. And like I said, if you wanna download that intro to luminosity masking PDF, then just click the link in the description and you can download that and there'll be a raw file that you can follow along with, uh, you know, with the demonstration and with the instructions in the PDF. And it also goes into a bit more of what I've talked about here in terms of understanding luminosity masks. So um, yeah, that's a good guide. I would recommend downloading that. The link is in the description. But before you check that out, if you wanna take a look at some other of my luminosity masking videos on YouTube, then I'll just pop them up on the screen right now. So with that said, thanks for watching. I hope you found this video useful and I'll speak to you soon.